going to talk to you a little bit about failure hurts. You know, it's painful when things don't go our way. And so, in this case, many of us admit that if we do poorly, we'd rather not let anyone know. If you try to do things that are challenging, if you go after the hard jobs, if you go after the tough missions, you know, it's not always going to go your way. And if you turn them down because you're afraid of making a mistake or you're afraid of failing, then you're going to plateau out. That there is a thing called fear of failure. That it can kind of get under our skin. And that it impacts the way that you develop as an officer. And it will impact the way you make decisions about leading. And you feel like you're a little more concerned about failure than you wanted to be. You know, where do you think that comes from? How do people get it? Is it genetic? Is it learned? Did you have some kind of really singular, horrific experience that, you know, forever influenced the way you think? Well, I'll tell you. I'll tell you where researchers say that fear of failure comes from. It comes from your parents. But over time, watching their pride and sometimes their disappointment and your response to that, sometimes you just get a little too concerned with it. And the good news is, because it's learned, that means you can change it. Okay, that means by checking yourself, by checking other people when you see them hesitate, that over time, through the right kind of coaching and development, like you get from your AOCs, you can get out from under that. If we're afraid of failure, it's, it, it tends to follow then that we're afraid of either feeling guilty or we're afraid of being ashamed. And as it turns out, guilt and shame are associated with leadership. Feelings of guilt or feelings of shame influence the way you lead. So guilt, that's a gift that you give yourself. Only you can feel guilty. That's when your conscience or when your inner self is holding you accountable for something. And you feel bad because of something that you've done. Shame is something that other people give you. Other people have to shame you. Guilt is associated with slightly better leadership. Feelings of guilt or conscientiousness or personal accountability. That's what focuses us on our duty. So don't ever feel bad about kicking yourself a little and holding yourself accountable. That's just a natural part of being a conscientious leader. Shame is different because it's inherently organizational. Now you've got an organization that's impacting your emotions through shame. And research shows that is not associated with better leadership. In fact, it's associated not only with, with less effective personal leadership on the part of individuals, but it's also destructive inside the organization. And when you find yourself doing it to somebody else, check yourself. It's probably not necessary. Everybody at conferences wants to talk about courage. And they bring in courageous role models, heroic, inspirational people and stuff like that. Everybody wants to talk about courage. We see cowardly behavior every day. Every day. But nobody wants to talk about it. And, you know, I'm convinced that one of the reasons no one wants to talk about cowardice is that they immediately go to making it a dispositional quality of an individual. That person is a coward. When in fact, when you look at that definition, excess self-interest, I guarantee you everybody in this room is capable of cowardly behavior at some point in time. What really is courage and what really is cowardice? And is it really about being a courageous person or a coward cowardly person? Or is it more about how we discipline our thinking how we train our people, and especially about the relationship of ourselves to our duty and our unit. You need to reflect on your failures. Don't, don't sweep them under your own carpet and never learn from them. As you look to your right and your left and you think, nobody, ever, no, nobody is going to make mistakes like I'm going to make. 
well, look, there's somebody standing up in front of you right now that wound up getting a star, and I made lots of mistakes. I made lots of mistakes. Don't ever be afraid of your failures. Don't ever be afraid to admit to it, because for every failure that you all have in your Air Force careers, I guarantee you, you're going to do 20 things right or 50 things right. And for that, as a citizen of the U.S. and somebody that's pretty optimistic about where our country's headed, thank you very much.